Hello, this is Reed Losberg here again from Intelligent Controls. We are looking again at some sophisticated communications that are happening within a Victron GX device with some external gear. This time, we are looking at a HOTS DC generator uh, that's charging at 48 volts. And in this particular case, and part of why we're so excited about it, is that we have it following commands from Victron. It's also showing up in Victron. So let's take a look at our remote console. The first thing I'm going to show you here is the brief. Uh, pretty familiar with this page. Uh, we've got our battery status, our loads. Uh, this is a test system that we have running in our shop at the moment. I think we have some heaters plugged into this. Uh, and then over on this side, we've got our grid connection, our solar, neither of which are active at the moment. But the one that I specifically want to point out to you is this one here in the middle. This is our DC generator. This is that HOTS generator showing up as its own data tracker on the remote console. If we pop over to the VRM side of things, uh, most of this is going to look pretty familiar. But the cool part is this specific box for the DC generator. Like any device in these Victron systems, uh, we can click on a good number of these and see a little more information about it. This one here is what we're going to look at. The HOTS Genset. This is what it's named itself. And the big wow factor here is that this is able to function with its own auto start functionality as well as being able to manually trigger that start. Uh, we have a selection of uh, information that we'll go through here in a minute, but for the moment, what I want you to watch is this output signal here, the voltage, amperage, and wattage, and I am going to manually start this. Now let's just do this on a timed run. Um, this is a test, so we don't really need to have it running for that long. Um, typical situation, maybe you want to just run this as a bit of an example or, or to troubleshoot something. So let's start this. <laughs> There we go, 49.65 volts coming out of the generator. And this is measurements that the generator itself is providing. We've got 67, 69, gradually climbing as that wattage goes up. Um, and we've got this limit. It's a 100 amp, 48 volt DC generator. So let's walk down our list here. Auto start functionality is active, but we manually started it. We can manually stop it at any time. Uh, current runtime, obviously pretty straightforward. Control status. How was it started? Was it an automatic start, or, or did we, in this case, manually start it? Uh, no error codes. It's running, meaning it is functional and operational and generating power for us. No error codes on that side of things. Uh, the remote start is enabled. We have output. We've got 50 volts and a little bit over 90 amps, 90, 91 amps seeming to be the average on that. Now let's click into this first one with the options uh, uh, submenu underneath it. So the engine, what are we going to see in here? Uh, a lot of really great data. First off, this is the RPMs, the percentage of load, how much of the possible power that this thing is generating is it generating. Uh, oil temperature and coolant temperature and the starter battery voltage. These are all measurements that are coming from inside of the HOTS generator, it is passing that through the VE CAN network to our GX device. In this case, that's a, a Chrono GX. It's great data for troubleshooting, seeing what's going on, kind of measuring the status of your, your generator. Uh, run and service time, pretty typical stuff here. Total run time, uh, we've been playing with this for a few weeks now. We haven't really run it all that much, so it only has about five hours on it. Daily run time, this is an interesting place to go check to see how often this has run, how much it's run per day, things like that. Um, in this case, we've ran it a little bit today just to test and make sure that we are ready to go for this demonstration. Run time until service, this number is counting down how many hours remaining until it needs a service, an oil change, filters, etc., whatever your generator might be. It's counting down from this number, which is a manually settable number. You can change this to anything you need. Some of these HOTS generators have extended oil pans, which mean they can run for longer periods without needing service. Uh, and then, much like you do in your car when you have a, a service interval done, you can reset that so that this counter starts over. Now let's go back to this page and let's take a look at our DC genset settings. This here is very cool because a lot of what's happening here 
is interaction with DVCC. That is Victron's Distributed Voltage Current Control. Charge voltage, 52.7. You'll notice this is grayed out. That means that this is something that we don't have active control of because the charge voltage is currently controlled by the BMS. BMS controlled indicated here. The BMS control is enabled automatically. This is really exciting because this means that, in this case, the, the Pylon Tech US5000 batteries we have attached to this system are in charge. They are dictating this charge voltage, and should they need a higher or lower charge voltage, they make that decision, and the generator responds to it. Uh, charge current limit, if for some reason you needed to limit that, we have this manually set to 100 amps because that is the maximum charge current of this particular generator. Depending on voltages, you may get more or less out of that. Started here for, for a good uh, general example. If you're running this at high altitude, perhaps, um, maybe you're running it at, at 8,000 feet and you know that it's going to be struggling a little bit harder in that thin air. Perhaps you want to lower your charge current limit manually just as, as kind of a precautionary thing. Anyway, charge current limit being manually settable is fantastic. BMS control, if you have anything that disconnects, you may need to reset that. Back on our settings page. This page you will recognize from the generator auto start stop relay menu. Now this menu is in the Victron GX device, typical settings, uh, when you turn on Relay 1 as a Gen Start Stop Relay. This is specifically in the device. These are the settings that are inside of the device setup for this generator, meaning we are not taking over Relay 1. Relay 1 is still available if you had an AC generator attached to this, for example, or wanted to run an alarm relay or uh, some other use for that Relay 1. We have not taken over Relay 1 of the GX device to make use of this generator start-stop. A lot of this you can find in another one of our videos where we talk about generator start-stop basics on this. Um, you know, minimum run times if the generator starts, how long do you want it to run? Uh, alarm when the generator is not in auto start mode, quiet hours, the conditions, um, all your typical conditions being able to start the generator based on battery SOC, battery voltage, etc. So now backing out to the device page, this here, this connection, this is our VE CAN bus. And I'll show you this in a moment. This is on the VE CAN network with several other devices, meaning it doesn't take over uh, any ports on your, your GX device either. You can run it alongside of VE CAN capable so smart solar charge controllers. Um, the Lynx Shunt is also a VE CAN device, several other VE CAN devices that we have in the Victron environment. And this is on the same port and running in a chain with those same devices. Some other basic information on that specific device is also in this menu. Now I am going to go back and we're going to look at the settings and we're going to go all the way down to services. Specifically, this generator is attached to VE CAN port 1. VE CAN bus profile, pretty standard, uh, nothing special about this in the world of Victron devices. Now if we go into this Victron device, we see we have several devices attached here. Uh, the Acrono, this is, is our controller, our GX device through which we're examining this remote console. And this RS486000 is the unit that we've got hooked up for testing. Um, the HOTS Gen set, is its own device in this menu. There are also a couple of other undefined devices that are a part of this HOTS Genset system. Uh, those are different components within the HOTS generator, but they do show up as an individual device, uh, which is great because it means that information is passing through several devices to provide us all of this information. Um, now I want to take a look at DVCC. We've gone through DVCC. You're familiar with it already. Uh, if you have seen any of our other videos talking about DVCC, this controlling BMS, this Pylon Tech battery is what is making the decisions for charge status when we are looking at our generator. Now, this tab uh, up in the upper left corner, this is something specifically uh, an added feature that's really expanded in this new GUI that Victron released uh, with Venus 3.5 and, and higher numbers of that firmware. This is the HOTS generator on its own controls. You'll notice on the far right, 
Relay 1 and Relay 2 are still available. This Relay 1 could be turned into another generator start-stop and trigger some external AC generator in a situation that, uh, that has something like that. But this here, this is how you manually start this system, which this is fantastic. This means that anyone on site can pull up your GX device. Anyone with a remote console can pull up your GX device. Get into the console, start the generator. Back here at this home page, this is something that we're, we're really excited about. I'm going to run this one more time for you so you can see it. And I'm going to start this from this generator start stop. We're going to do the manual start. We're going to do it as a timed run. <laughs> Now this is charging the battery and it's helping support these AC loads on the output of our RS-48-6000 inverter. This is something we've been working on for quite some time, uh, helping build the integration between the HOT system and the Victron environment. And we're quite excited about this, being able to have a DC generator, particularly a DC generator that shows up within our Victron system and we get information directly from it, this is pretty fantastic. This is a lot of control, a lot of data, and a lot of sophistication. It's also a fantastic option if you need to run DC loads primarily. A lot of remote systems, uh, network systems, communications, equipment, uh, solar and security systems that are primarily operating with DC loads, this DC generator is ideally suited to. It's also a great generator if you just want to make sure you have backup power. Rather than running an AC generator, converting that AC into DC so that you can charge your batteries, we can take that directly from a DC system. Very efficient, very good option for unusual situations. If you need to build a enclosure or have an existing enclosure that you need a generator inside of, it's a very small generator. Uh, you can find dimensions and details on our website. This HOTS generator will soon be installed in a hybrid generator demonstration system. We're calling it the Power Trip. It's a trailer mounted system and a training tour. The idea being that people can take a look inside, ask questions, and get some fresh perspective on their system designs around hybrid power systems. Check out the links below to learn more and see scheduled events. And if this video was interesting or helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. That way you'll get notified when we publish new videos. Thanks again.